Today we are talking about when Mr. Right becomes Mr. Hell No. How to move on after a breakup. I definitely have a lot of experience in this, you guys. I'm not proud to admit that I've been divorced twice. I am on my third and final marriage. Why do I feel like Ross from Friends? Three divorces, three divorces. In this series, we sit together, we do makeup. I did this look for you guys as we talk about real life topics. And this one is definitely a real topic that we have all gone through. We've all had our heart broken. And I wanted to just share some tips that I've learned from my personal experience you guys of having my heart broken so many times of what I did to move on after that so that's our topic for today and this is our makeup pull out all of your makeup goodies and we can do this look together let's get on to our topic of how to move on after your heart is broken Let me briefly just tell you my story before I give you my seven pointers because I have seven steps today of how to get on after a breakup and I wanna share really quickly my story so you know I'm not just you know talking out the side of my mouth like I've actually lived through this. I've been divorced twice. Again, not proud to say that and admit that here on camera. So I got married right after college. I was 21 years old and I married my college sweetheart. We were married for seven years. We ended up getting divorced just because we married too young. We honestly wanted very different things in life. I won't get into all the details. We wanted to live in different states. We wanted different paces of life. At the end of the day, we were not compatible. So we ended up getting divorced after seven years of marriage. I very quickly after that started getting dating and getting into another relationship and that's one of my biggest mistakes I'll talk about in a second is moving on very quickly. I got remarried years later, even though I had started dating this person, you know, pretty quickly after my divorce, that one ended very, very badly. That relationship ended up being highly, highly toxic, abusive and all of that. So I divorced, got out of that. And I was like, you know, I'm done. I'm not even going to date to let alone get married anymore. I'm going to be single and travel the world with my dog lady. And we're going to have a great life. <laughs> And I ended up getting married to my now last and final husband. And I, we were friends actually. I won't tell our love story. I'll save that for another video. But I was determined at this point in my life to just stay single. I was done with relationships. I was done with men. But we had already known each other and he was such a good person. And it felt like I knew him my whole life. And I knew that he had this heart of gold. So long story short, we ended up um, dating after we were friends for quite a bit and then got married shortly after after that and we have a daughter together we've been married it'll be five years this year which is so crazy to me and we're super happy everything's going really great so I had several bumps along the road you guys before I finally I'm now 43 and knock on wood I, I found my Prince Charming my amazing relationship great man amongst all of the roadblocks and toads along the way so <laughs> so that's where my pointers come from is trust me it's personal experience you guys have lived through this I've, I've <laughs> fallen many times when it comes to relationships so so step number one to moving on after a breakup is take time to grieve it does not matter who broke off the relationship if it was you or the other person if you do not take time to grieve you tend to make bad decisions afterwards and that's what happened with me after my first divorce you guys is I did not take time to grieve because I was already mentally ready to move on for quite a while even before I had filed for divorce so I was thinking oh I'm just ready to get out there ready to mingle or whatever and I ended up making a bad decision with the next person I got with because I really hadn't take time to process the last relationship grieve and figure out what it is that I want in a partner what is it that I need and then on top of it you have baggage that you have to sort through like I had baggage from their first relationship even if it wasn't this you know horrible divorce or anything like that there's still baggage that I ended up bringing to the next relationship and was carrying around myself it just wasn't good for me so I I feel like if you don't take the time to process and be by yourself for a little bit after a breakup, it's actually not good for you in the long run because at least for me, you guys, I just made horrible decisions. I, you know, I struggled with a lot of emotions and mental trauma and things like that because I didn't take time to process it, work on myself, figure out what I need and want in life. So if I could go back in time and tell my younger self anything, it would be just take time before getting into a new relationship or even just dating because healing takes time. It doesn't 
doesn't happen overnight. And at the end of the day, it's a, it's a broken relationship and you have to heal from that. So then step number two kind of goes along with it. And that is don't be afraid to be alone. I think that was kind of intuitively, I didn't want to admit it that I, I like being in relationships. I like sharing a home with someone. I like that family environment. I'm very much a homebody. So the thought of being alone terrified me. I had to admit to myself that my fear of being alone was going to set me up for being with someone that obviously was not good for me. And that's, again, that's what happened with my second relationship. I think I was just like, okay, I've been married for several years. I don't know, you know, how to be alone. It's been so long. So let me just, you know, just start dating and getting into a relationship with the next person. No, you guys, just <laughs> telling you from my experience, it was such, it was such a learning lesson I had to go through. So I learned to finally later on in life that it's okay to be alone. Like, like even now, you guys, when I go on business trips, I was just on a business trip last week to Tennessee. I ate by myself. I went shopping by myself. I do so many things by myself and I love it so much now. But me in my 20s was terrified. Like I would never step foot in a restaurant by myself. I would never do anything alone because it felt so terrifying. And now I'm like, this is nice. <laughs> one really quick thing I want to say about the being alone part. So I think one mistake I had almost made too, you know, being alone was keeping myself busy and not, and not sitting down in my thoughts. I think I kept running away from my thoughts. I could stay busy. I was working on Makeup Geek and I was traveling and this and that. And I wasn't sitting in silence and being alone enough to actually confront my thoughts and my baggage and my feelings and all of that. So I will say one thing with that, with being alone, it's not just physically alone. It's mentally, emotionally, and spiritually allowing yourself the space to really sit down and say, okay, what worked in that last relationship? What didn't work? What was toxic? What do I need? It just, you really have to be able to process it all and be able to figure out like what genuinely makes you happy. And then step number three is to focus on yourself. So instead of worrying or being sad about the past relationship, obviously there's heartbreak. Think of this as an opportunity. This is a great time to focus on yourself, to take those dance classes that you wanted to do or go sign up for yoga or travel or adopt a dog or volunteer somewhere or something. This is such a great time. Instead of being like, oh, I'm not in this relationship anymore. It's like, oh, I have time to myself to really focus and do things that I love. I think for me, when I switched that mindset, it was so freeing. So what I did is I, I started taking French lunch, French lessons, which I still cannot speak French, you guys. It's awful. It's so embarrassing. My friend, Helen, she, hi, Helen. She's from Paris. I still, like years later, I'm like, I still, I can understand French, but I can't speak it. But I still try and I learn. But I, I took French lessons. I have my dog, Lady. I traveled. I did all these amazing things. And it then turned into this positive experience. And it kind of helped me be less sad about the breakup because I was like, ooh, I get to do all of this stuff now. So after you focus on yourself, then this is step number four is to reflect. And this is where you sit down in your thoughts. I know it's really scary. Every time I have to sit down in my thoughts, I'm like, oh man, <laughs> like it's terrifying. But it's a great time to reflect and say, okay, this obviously didn't work in this relationship. This is what I need in a partner. This is what I want. And just sitting down and writing and really reflecting on what it is you need. So you don't make that same mistake again and go after the same type of people. Because what I was realizing, you guys, is I was going after the same type of guys, ones that, you know, I thought I could fix or ones that were, you know, just not good people. But I thought if I was kind enough or whatever, I, I had to sort through my issues and come to terms with that and realize, okay, like I'm bringing something to the table too. And that's really, really hard to admit and sit and reflect on. It's so important so that you don't keep like Go, attracting the same type of people, you know? So step number five, I kind of talked about in step number three about focusing on yourself, but step number five is to find a hobby. Now, this is so, so important. I know I keep saying this over and over again, you guys, because honestly, this is not only good for yourself, but this could be when you're ready and after you've had time to heal, a great place to meet someone. It could be at, you know, dance classes. Maybe it's like, you know, you take a barista class or you, you know, sign up for a language course and that could be where you meet someone and you make friends or you find a potential date down the road. You just never know. So I always, anytime I think about my time of going through divorce and all that, I'm like, man, I'm so glad that I took time to have some hobbies because it was just healthy all around. And I ended up meeting some really cool people along the way too. And then step number six, you guys, is very, very important. And I'll tell you my story with this too, is to don't actively look for a relationship. So I've, after I had my second divorce, like I told you guys, I swore off dating. I swore off men. I swore off 
off relationships. I was never going to get married again. I was going to live my happy life with my dog, Lady, who's still at my feet right now snoring. If you hear snoring, it's her. I had, was actively not looking for a relationship. And that's when God, the universe, had was like, oh, okay. So now you're ready to meet someone. And that's how I ended up with my husband because he and I both were at a point where neither one of us, we had both gotten over, you know, some tough relationships. And we ended up just being friends and mutual and never thought that it was going to turn into anything outside of that and it ended up working so well because we weren't actively trying to look to date someone so we were raw like I mean you guys my husband before we started dating saw me at my worst like no makeup on sweatpants hot mess grumpy days like you name it he saw it all there was no like <laughs> There was no fronting on anything, you guys. So we, we when we ended up dating, I'm like, hell, this guy actually wants to date me after he's seen all of that. And it worked out so good because the relationship was built on this friendship and just rawness and honesty because we weren't actively looking for a relationship. So I like, I, I know I'm just speaking from my experience, you guys, and everyone's different, but oh man, what a life changer it was. Even my friends, I talk to you guys, when they stop actively trying and, and hoping and wishing for a relationship, bam is when it happens. I'm telling you guys. So this is such a huge step for me. Don't actively look for a relationship because I swear to that guys can almost sense that you're looking for a relationship. And so it's almost like a turnoff in a way. I don't know how they can do this, but I feel like they can sense it. So if you are so independent, so focused on yourself, you don't give a shiz in the world, you're doing your thing. That is so appealing to another person because it's like, oh wow, like she's independent. She's doing all this stuff. She doesn't care about whatever. It, it attracts people because you were just, you're focusing on you. You know, that's confidence right there. Okay. So after you, I know this looks scary as hell me getting this eyelash curler up on my eyes, you guys, hold on. Let me put my mascara on really quick. So after you've done all these steps, you've taken time to grieve, you've processed your emotions, you've been by yourself, you picked up a hobby, you did all of this stuff. Now it's time to open yourself up to love. Let me finish putting on my mascara. You guys start my lip and I'll tell you my story. It's, it's insane story. You guys, you have to hear this. Okay. So you're all ready for this story. So how did I go from wanting to be single with my dog traveling the world to now being married a third time and a mom? So after my second divorce, I was obviously in a really bad place mentally and emotionally and I started seeing a counselor and a spiritual healer and just all these different people that were what people would consider outside the box. And I am definitely am not this outside of the box person. Usually if it's nothing practical, I usually don't believe it. But now I do. I'll tell you why. So I started seeing the spiritual healer. Honestly, just just to try to deal with my emotions. I was using it almost as therapy to work on myself to try to heal from my abusive past relationship. One of my sessions, the healer was, it came up about relationships, you know, because I was trying to talk through some of my points of why, you know, how I could heal myself. And she had said, Marlene, I want you to, to lay on this table right here and just, we're gonna meditate for a little bit. And she's like, I want you to just focus on your life being happy. And I want you to say these words in your head. I open myself up to accept love. And it was something along those lines. And she said, I want you to say that over and over in your head. And that's what you're gonna do for the next five to 10 minutes. So you just lay here, you're just gonna meditate. Like ignore all the noise. You're just gonna say, I open myself up to receive love. And I did that in, in the back of my mind. I was like, okay, like I'm not gonna be with anyone. And you guys, seriously, I'm not even joking. It wasn't that much longer after that is when my husband and I had started going from the friend category to starting dating. Now, does it have anything to do with that, I don't know. But I think I was even allowing myself to consider, you know, being with my husband because I had that mindset of, okay, I can't put up all these walls and block everything and say, I'm never going to be in a relationship again because I got hurt so badly. I'm tired. I don't want to be divorced or anything anymore. But when I let those walls down and I just, you know, told myself, okay, I can love again and allow myself to do that is when it happened. And I know that sounds very woo woo and crazy. You guys, I'm not saying everyone has to do this, but there's something about being in that mindset of just being okay with the thought of possibly getting hurt again, but also even greater possibility that you can find your absolute love, someone amazing that's gonna treat you great and can be someone you spend the rest of your life with. You never know. So anyways, that's my little soapbox, my two cents for the day and my, my personal stories that I shared. <laughs> so this is the final look, just you know, something classic and chic with a nice shimmer on the lids. I had fun doing this one. So thanks for hanging out with you, me, you guys. Let me know what topics you wanna talk about. Come back next week, we'll do a 
another, you know, chit chat and do our makeup together. So I hope you have an amazing week. You guys stay happy and healthy like always. Take care and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.